Hi, uh, hello everyone. I'm Tetsuya, working at an edtech company based in Tokyo. My Twitter account is Jesse Tetsuya. I'm going to upload my slide on the Twitter. So if you have an um, interest in it, you can follow me. So if you have uh, some questions or comments when I'm presenting, so please talk about my talk in the Q1 session. And I'm fluent in both Japanese and English, so you can ask me questions in either language. So I mostly work in both data science and engineering, and I have been involved with several AI ML projects and have been implementing ML APIs and ML ops environment. So based on my experiences, I will talk about Flask 2.0 versus Fast API in REST API development. So this is the background. So there are many kinds of application frameworks. On the other hand, REST API development for Microsoft's architecture and ARMA projects are in demand. So let's look at numbers. So many frameworks exist, even though specifying Python web frameworks. So the left picture is the Stack Overflow survey result of Python framework popular users' popularity. And the right picture is JetBrains survey result. According to these survey results, Flask is more popular than Fast API. On top of that, Flask had a major version up from version one to version two on May 2021. So Flask is getting more attention this year. However, Fast API, which focuses on easily developing APIs, has been rapidly getting more popular since Fast API became in public 2018 because of the demand of ML API development. So this makes many Python engineers wonder which frameworks is more appropriate in AR ML projects. So here's a question. How can we choose Python frameworks? And which is better, Flask 2.0 or Fast API? I will take this approach to answer the questions. I assume that four evaluation criteria, which are variety of functions and extensions, performance, flexibility of REST API architecture, and learning cost. So based on these four criteria, I will compare Flask and Fast API. But we have only uh, 30 minutes and 40 minutes, so I do not talk about details of the meaning of each word, such as what is API, what is REST, and et cetera. Also, this talk is based on my experiences of, of AI ML projects. So the target audience of this talk might be the Python engineers, data engineers, and ML engineers, or engineers who productionize ML model or develop data-oriented products in daily work. <laughs> so this is a follow-up. Uh, Flask has some version up uh, from version one to version two in May 2021. See, so in this year, Flask included nested blueprint, async await, type hinting, a 15 times speed up of multi-part form body and routing shortcut. So this talk is based on Flask 2.0. So for audiences who have never used uh, Flask and FastAPI, I will quickly share a summary of them. So both frameworks are micro frameworks. Flask is developed by Armin Ronenscher in 2010 and Fast API is developed by Sebastian in 2018 based on the Starlet. This means Fast API is a wrapped framework of Starlet. So Flask is WSGI based framework. 
and the fast API is ASCII based framework. The biggest differences are the server interfaces and eight use history gap. So these differences influence the functional varieties, performance, flexibility, and the amount of know-how on the online resources. So, okay, so now I hope that we are on the same page. So let's get in detail about differences from the next slide. So we talk about differences of functions and extensions of Flask and Fast API. I picked up the characteristic functions of each framework. Basically, both frameworks have similar functions and extensions. Even if one has the other does not have, third-party libraries or others can achieve what both frameworks want to do. For example, Flask has Blueprint, but Fast API has API Router, which are similar role as functions. Pedantic and Open API are not building Flask, but if you want to use them, you can install Pydantic from PyPI and use JSON schema as data validation. In terms of extensions, the result of Google index search shows that Flask has large amount of extension, while Fast API does not. The extensions could get rid of your extra effort to develop functions from scratch, such as email, authentication, login, and etc. So I cannot talk about all of extensions within 40 minutes, but let me give you a more detailed explanation of request and application context of Flask and Pydantic Open API. <laughs> So Pydantic has good match with data class, MyPy, type annotation, and open API. On the other hand, this type annotation ecosystem is not necessarily dependent on frameworks. If you do not hesitate to write validation calls by yourself, it is not necessary for you to use it. The Swagger editor and the Swagger UI could be replaced with Sphinx and JSON schema. Even if generating the code by OpenAPI generator, logic has to be written by hand, so the use case might be limited. The Sphinx and JSON schema can be one of the options, especially in AIM project. So in AIM project, data scientists and ML engineers have accountability for stakeholders of data. So in order to explain the detail, document flexibility and maintainability are critically important. Also, Sphinx small flexibility to generate the document from JSON schema and add image, images and description. So Pydantic and Open API could be replaceable with others. However, request and application context, which Flask has, seems to be unique compare, comparing to other frameworks. So request and application context are the memory space for framework building global variables, such as current app, G, request, and session. So let me share more about what they are. <clears throat> So this slide shows a way to use current app and request which Flask has. Flask code and Fast API code look like very similar with each other. The way to use the request of Fast API, Fast API is a standard way compared with other Python frameworks, but they cannot use it like Flask use. Both look like similar with each other, but reality it does not. So this drawing shows how Flask handles request and output responses, and how the application proxy and the request proxy are used. The current app and the request proxies are not actually global variables. They point to global objects that are implemented so implemented as context locals. So the proxies are always unique to each worker. 
So just by looking at this sequence from request to response, some of you might question if the accesses to global variables are uh, through safe and through unique. The data need to be stored in the way that only one worker can retrieve back which means that data get back their own specific data that's unique to each worker. In order to achieve this, context local is implemented in Flask by using local stack of RegZarg. So RegZarg is a comprehensive WSGI web application library, which is also built in Flask. So these implementations of Flask, such as context local, application context, request context, current app, G request and session, characterizes Flask. <clears throat> However, context local is in fact threat local, uh, which is not for big applications and it is not appropriate in asynchronous. So the usage of it depends on situation. So Flask has a unique functions which are not replaceable and much more extension and index results than Fast API. In terms of variety, Flask wins out over Fast API. On the other hand, main feature of Fast API is performance. So in the next section, compare the performance between them. So next, I will take a look at the performance, which means speed and stabi stability of IO bound processing. So before starting to test performance, we should clarify why you test performance, what you test and how you test. The reason that IO bound processing largely influences the framework and application server selections, while GPU bound processing can be recovered by other type of Python, such as Python or other languages. Because global interpret lock constrains single process and single thread. So to compare them, I used a simplest and the same async based code of Flask and FastAPI on the single worker. And I checked performance by using Vegeta as a load test tool. Vegeta is Golang based HTTP load test tool. It can be used both as command line, UTG, and library. Many of them, including me, I use lowcast in daily work, but this time it is too much. So I chose Vegeta. These are very simple and the same async based code of Flask and Fast API. In order to easily check output, I wrote one second sweep with async, async.getter function and print function. So each request will take one second until it is finished. If Vegeta attacks too much to this code, the code will be broken. So I will order uh, Vegeta to send 10 requests per second for 10 seconds. So now, uh, make a Vegeta attack. So this is a result of Vegeta attack that I send 10 requests per second for 10 seconds. The amount of requests are very small, but it is okay if you get insightful results. So look at the ball numbers. As you can see the result on the table, Flask took 39 seconds to handle 100 requests and FastAPI took 10 seconds. So FastAPI is faster three times than Flask. On top of that, 
Flask has 28% error rate, while Post API is 100 success rate. Of course, if we want to test performance more seriously, or you have planned to do load test for product release, you should set up the environment using only for the load test and send larger amount of requests, which is much heavier. So just in case, uh, let's look at other evidences. According to these performance test websites, we can make sure that Fast API is faster than Flask. So why is Flask so slow? As you can see the output of the left box on the slide, this code handles each request one by one and finish one by one task. On the other hand, Fast API concurrently handles requests and output each response. This is because in fact, async of Flask 2.0 is not actual async that everyone image. This is async. So Flask is executed within the context of a synchronous framework of the async code was executed. Even if various async tasks in a single request was executed, even async task must finish before response gets sent back. So this results in that error rate and latency of Rask. However, it is very difficult to test performance only by just comparing frameworks because there are several influential factors of performance such as web servers, interfaces, application servers, libraries, application code, and languages. So besides architecture with private cloud services can recover the performances. So you can choose each component and recover each weaknesses according to uh, tier one to tier three and tier architectures. So the latency and error rate of Flask could be recovered by the way to write code and load balancer. So uh, in terms of performance, uh, Flask, Fast API overweights Flask. So next, let's look at the flexibility of REST API architecture that Flask and Fast API can make. So in this talk, architecture means the directory architecture. So in the case of REST API architecture for ML API, there are less of well-known project structures like MVT and MVC. The basic REST API architecture has only models and views, which is logic. So Google index search results of the Flask directory templates of cookie cutter are more than Fast API. So let me give you examples about directory structure. Uh, this is uh, one of uh, the examples based on my experiences. I found that this kind of directory structure is very easy to work with. The the directory structure on the left box has the API directory and model directory as the main root directory. The Danda init.py module located in API directory has routing, routing lists. Each logic for each endpoint is implemented in each module located in URLS directory. So if you are working in a small team, from one to three members and at new endpoint, you can just add a new endpoint in URLS directory. So if the number of team members increase, you can split each module into each version and work together, staying loosely coupled between modules. 
So Fast API can make it possible to have similar directory structure with Flask, but database connection and the config are a little bit different from Flask directory practice. In the case of development by Flask, the constant variables are set in the config files rather than environment variable. And the Flask has wrapping libraries of data, database connection such as Flask SQL Alchemy. So this makes us to focus uh, separately on models and the config individually. On the other hand, FastAPI basically sets the constant variables as environment variables and prepare database directory for database connection, models and data validation schema. So this also looks simple. Overall, both do not have largely differences in terms of flexibility. If I had to say, Flask has more cookie cutter templates than the Fast API, but it is not such important. So both frameworks can make various patterns of directory structure. Some of audiences might also know other patterns and practices. So in terms of flexibility, we should not judge which is better or not. It depends on how much you are familiar with each user framework. <clears throat> so lastly, I will talk about learning cost. So learning cost means how much time you will take to master what you do know at all. This is decided by difficulties to write code and to know how to write code. As we saw the code so far, Flask and FastAPI are grammatically similar with each other but you need to know the terminology around async if you use fast API. Accessibility to resources, which means resource volumes, are important to learn new things. So I roughly searched learning materials of both frameworks by using these indexes on this slide. Overall, Flask has more resources, resource volumes than fast API. I guess that this is because Flask and Wizgy has more history than fast API and Ezgi. So some audiences, some audiences might have interest in Flask and or fast API or an async. Let me share quickly learning strategies and learning materials. So this is kind of off topic, but I have a strong background of education and technology. So I share each step to learn new things. So first step is to recognize what you do not know and categorize a type of knowledge. Second step is to acquire declarative knowledge. It's basically how you know to do something such as facts or history or rules for mathematical equations are all examples of decorative knowledge. So decorative knowledge is also usually explicit knowledge, meaning that you are consciously aware that you understand the information. Third step is to acquire procedural knowledge. Procedural knowledge refers to the knowledge of how to perform a specific skill or a task. And it is considered a knowledge related to methods procedures or operation of equipment. Procedural knowledge is also referred to as implicit knowledge or know-how. So if you know some of uh, what you want to learn, you should make top-down approach, which means that you can start from step three. So for engineers uh, without a think experience, I recommend these Python movies and tutorials of async and learn step by step from one to three. So if you are not familiar with Fast API, I recommend 
these learning materials, uh, Sebastian, who developed Fast API, uh, talks around the world, PyCon, so you can easily find hands on movies on YouTube. So these are my recommendations. So for engineers who want to learn Flask, the presentation from Armin Roninger who developed Flask is useful not to learn, but also to know why he made. So Flask is used in the university CS lecture. The lecture module about Flask of Harvard University might make you fun to learn Flask. So, uh, in terms of learning cost, Flask is easier to learn because you can start to develop without knowing async and it has large amount of learning materials. So in summary, so it looks like this. All things considered, uh, Flask has a bit more strength than Fast API, but it depends on flexibility. On top of that, among the four criteria, the learning cost is most important to major framework. This is because a variety can be replaced with third-party libraries or others. Performance can be recovered by architecture and flexibility does not have differences. Also, the advancement of technology is very fast nowadays. So the trend changes every year. So how fast you can catch up is very critically important. So many audiences might love fast API, but if you are not familiar with uh, both frameworks, I suggest to learn Flask at the first and then fast API with async. This is because Flask and fast API are grammatically similar with each other. So this means you can easily catch up even after you master the Flask. So as I already mentioned, uh, these results uh, came from interfaces and history gap. So I will talk about uh, future with, with expectations at the last. So if ASGI became PEP, uh, I think the development of fast API will be much faster and it will have more attention from engineers. So there are still unknown practices of architecture patterns, including ANCH patterns. So I would like to continue to look for best practices of architecture patterns, which framework can fit with. And some already noticed uh, this last month, uh, books of Flask and Fast API are uh, very rare for us to find them in bookstore. <clears throat> I think that this can largely influence uh, the number of learners and the amount of online resources and community size. So I wrote a book about Flask and it will be published this year. I hope that this book will be delivered to anyone, someone of audiences. <clears throat> so um, I hope that my talk was uh, beneficial for you. Uh, if you have an interest in the EdTech domain or in what our team is doing, reach out to me. Thank you.